Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shai. All praise is honor and glory be unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone that taught us his truth and who rule well. Peace and love, salutations and mercy be unto the hopeful elect Akim that are hazarding in their lives to push this truth, the true gospel, the true wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Bible. Magnifying and praising the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, Yahweh being the name of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai being the name of the one whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, who is the Messiah and the Redeemer for the nation of Israel only. He's on his way to establish a kingdom for himself, and by default, a kingdom for the nation of Israel, and to bring to fruition those promises that were promised unto our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's also coming to bring judgment. And to escape that judgment, we must believe in Yahweh Shai and follow his words. All right, keep his words until the very end. All right, our conversation must be in heaven and not upon the earth. As the scripture states, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So there's things that we must do in regards to mortifying the deeds of the body and giving up those desires are those evil desires that can cause us to perish and pour the wrath of Yahweh Bashmi Awashai upon us. And that's the reason why our message to you as Israelites is to repent and get yourselves right in the sight of Yahweh Bashmi Awashai so that you can escape in the day of the Lord. To the rest of you believers that are out there, you Akim and few Akwathium that make up the rest of the hopeful elect, you know, may Yahweh's grace. And his mercy, you know, and his loving kindness be upon you as well. And may he watch over you and your households in these perilous times and give you the strength to endure and to bear adversity. Yahweh Shai is on his way. And in this time, we see also, you know, our enemies mounting up. All right, they're, they're uh, uh, getting ready for battle. You know, they're prepping. They're making preparations. You know, they're getting, you know, sy their system in place, you know, to go fully online. And they're doing it gradually. You're seeing the DI system being set in place, which deals with biometrics, the measuring of the body. That's what it means. Biometrics means the measuring of the body. And that system will go simultaneously with the MOTB system. All right, they're getting people prepped for that. In a minute, you will not be able to go into a grocery store and be able to buy with cash because cash will no longer exist. Cash will be a thing of the past. All right, <laughs> that sounds like a title for a video, catchy title for a video. Cash will be a thing of the past. All right, because eventually <laughs> cash is going to be a dinosaur. All right. And Esau is going to market you know, this system as if it's needed, you know, as if it's the best thing, you know, as if it's, you know, a uh, very convenient, you know, and I did a video recently saying being beware of the word convenience, because that's how they're going to market, you know, this particular system to you, basically saying that it's going to make your life better. And all of the hell that people is going to catch, lacking food, lacking water, lacking safety and protection, people are going to begin to covet the MOTB and desire it. But you have to look at that the same way that Israel looked at the accursed things in the time of Achan. All right, it's an accursed thing. Now, going from here to the book of Exodus, and we'll be going to the book of Exodus, the 20th chapter. And beginning at verse 17, which it reads, it says, thou shall not, well, let me, yeah, let me, I'll start here. Thou shall not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shall not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his man servant, nor his maid servant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Yeah, because you have heard that thou shall not covet. It has been written. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's uh, wife, nor his ma manservant, nor his maidservant, 
nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Now, ultimately, what does it mean to covet? The word here in the Hebrew is H2530, which is Hamad, Hamad, which means to desire, to covet, to take pleasure in, delight in, to desire, to be desirable, to delight greatly, desire greatly. Desirableness, preciousness. And that's, that's um, the desirableness and preciousness is the feminine noun of that word. So ultimately, when you're lusting after something that belongs to someone else, all right, that's evil covetousness. Now, can you covet something in righteousness? Yes, you can. You know, because the apostle Paul said what? This is the book of 1 Corinthians 14 and 39. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues. So there's duality when it comes down to covet. Which you can covet in wickedness and you can covet in righteousness. If you're coveting to prophesy, if you're coveting to be righteous, if you're coveting to do the will of Yahweh Bashmi Shai, that's coveting in righteousness. But if you're coveting something that belongs into someone else, if you're coveting someone's wife, if you're coveting someone's manservant, maidservant, if you're coveting someone else's land, someone's car, if you're envious and jealous of them because you desire to have what they have, all right, that's a wicked lust. If you're desiring because of your sensual appetites that you can't control to be with somebody else's wife, all right, that's an evil covetousness. That's an evil desire. And this is the reason why we still need the law. You know, I was watching the beloved Akim, you know, the elders out in Dallas, and they were uh, uh, mentioning at, at their camp, Elder Yashawamba had mentioned how these pastors say that the law is done away with, and they speak of it as if it's such an a, a unholy thing, as if it's an evil thing. But then when you, when you look at the state and the condition of Jake, you know, and how they're, they're killing, you know, how they're committing adultery, you know, how they're robbing, you know, all of those things are stemmed in what? It's stemmed in covetousness. It's stemmed also in pride. So therefore, we still need the law. But when we come short of keeping the law, we have Yahweh Shai. Now it states in the book of Romans 7 and 7, it says, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? Yahweh forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law said, thou should not covet. See? So the law is good. And we still abide by the law. We still go by the law. But when we keep, come short of keeping the law, we have Yahweh Shai to be an atonement and a propitiation for us. And that's not saying that we break laws willingly. All right? But when you do it unwillingly and you feel uh, penitence because of, of, of your, you know, actions, all right, you ask for forgiveness in the name of Yahweh and the Heavenly Father will forgive you. The word, therefore, uh, covet is G1937, epithumio. And I, I believe that's how you pronounce it, Salaki, if I'm pronouncing it wrong. But it says to have desire for, to long for, to desire, to lust after, to covet of those who seek things forbidden. See? So what is forbidden? Someone else's wife. What is forbidden? Someone else's uh, a land. Someone else's uh, uh, ox. Someone else's ass. But in the modern day sense, someone else's car. Someone else's house. But you have individuals that lust you know and, and 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 have not you know and go and kill and they desire to have but they cannot obtain why they they go and fight wars and they still you know uh, uh have that fiery desire that can't be quenched because they still want more and the reason why they lack is because they don't ask in the name of yahweh Shai. and if they do ask you know, they, they ask it upon their lust, you know, not for the right reasons. And, and it mentions that within James 4 and beginning at verse 2, it says, Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, ye cannot obtain. 
Ye fight in war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask, and ye receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. See, so you don't ask for the right reasons. You got people that are Israelites that are out there praying for money. You got people that are Israelites that are out there, you know, praying for, you know, uh, um, all of the wrong reasons. You know, they're praying for all of the wrong reasons. You know, they're not praying for faith. They're not praying for mercy. They're not praying for judgment. And these are all of the things that the Lord require you to have. They're not praying for patience to endure adversity. All right, Yahweh Shai himself in the book of John, the 17th chapter, verse 15, said, Lord, I pray that you take them not out of the world, but that, that you may keep them from the evil. So Yahweh Shai didn't even pray for us to be taken out of the, the, uh, the situations that we're going through in the world. He prayed that the Heavenly Father keep us because it's needful for us to go through the things that we go through. Why? Because adversity builds character. All right, we need to become judges, wise, have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so that we can judge and rule over the world. And that's the reason why the scriptures say when you go into the book of Hebrews, the 13th chapter, beginning at verse 5, let your conversation be without covetousness. See, let your conversation be without seeking those those things which are forbidden. All right. A, a, a strong, wicked, evil, covetousness desire. It says, and be content with, with, with such things as ye have. For he have said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So if you ask Yahweh in the name of Yahweh Shai, but you're not asking amiss. If you do need in the time of need, and you ask Yahweh by Shmi Yahweh Shai to provide it for you, he will. Why? Because you're asking in faith. All right, is it not written in the scriptures? The book of uh, St. John, the 16th chapter, verse 23. And in the day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Why? Because you're asking in faith and you're not asking amiss. Now you have wicked individuals that are of the world, you know, that are Israelites. You know, to hell with it with the rest of the other nations. That's we're speaking about Israelites, because to you is given the promises, to you is given the covenants, to you is given, you know, a, a redemption through Yahweh. Alright, for the remission of sins. You know, to you are given the things, you know, that are precious. So it's expected of you, you know, to repent and get yourselves right and to live right according to the Lord. When you go to the book of first timothy 6 and 6 it says but godliness with contentment is great gain you know and let's look up the word contentment autarkia strong's g 841 austarkia austarkia a perfect condition of life in which no aid or support is needed sufficiency of the necessities of life a mind contented with its lot contentment so when you are godly and content all right you have a, a perfect condition of life in which no aid or support is needed all right because you know that if you how about shmiel was wanted you to have more then you will have more all right you have to learn what the will of the lord is all right, you have to be more acceptable and understand that if it was the will of Yahweh by Shemiah Washai, then it will happen. If Yahweh by Shemiah Washai wanted you to be rich, he would make you rich. All right, he would make you come into contact with a lot of money. But be mindful, the scripture said that those that be rich, it's hardly for, hard for them to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now you have those that have a a, a, a strong evil covetous de desire to become rich and and for the money what would they do for them for the money they'll sell even their own souls for the money they'll they'll uh, uh sacrifice their own family members for the money they'll kill their own mother for the money 
They'll kill their own uh, wife for the money. They'll kill their own husband for the money. And you see this amongst many celebrities. And when they obtain that status of fame that they wanted, and they've tasted the good life, you see how sorrowful they become and, and how hateful of their life they become. First of all, you don't get any freedom. You got cameras following you around everywhere. And then on top of that, all of your loved ones and your true friends are gone because you sacrifice them unto Satan for the love of money. Reading on, it says, for we brought nothing into the world and it is certain that we can carry nothing out and having food and remnant, let us therewith be content. See, having food and remnant, let us there be with content. So what you have right now, there would be content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts for they, for which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And guess what? The money is getting ready to change. They're getting ready to change the money from being a fiat currency, a federal reserve currency, to being a digital currency. So for the love of money, you're going to have a, um, many that covet after that, that and they're going to err from the faith and they're going to pierce themselves through with many sorrows, all right? Because they're going to do things that they know that they shouldn't do to obtain that MOTB, all right? The CHIP, the brain CHIP. Going from there to Philippians 4 and 11, not that I speak in respect of want, for I learn in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content, for I know how to, to be a base and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Yahweh Shai that strengthens me. And this is the mentality that you have to have. You can do all things through Yahweh Shai that strengthens you. All right, through Yahweh Shai, we're going to overcome and get the victory. All right, the scripture speaks about the faith. All right, and Yahweh Shai being the way that we're going to get the victory. So you have to learn how to be content, especially within these times, because we're living in a time when the structure of the society is collapsing. When the financial system of the society is being collapsed and Esau is, 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 is working on the left hand side as Satan, as the adversary, stripping away rights, stripping away freedoms. Working, working uh, uh, sinisterly, you know, or, or working as a, as a sinister, you know, people to make things hard for you, to, to, to uh, disrupt the, the, the uh, global supply, supply chain, to disrupt the monetary system. Why? Because ultimately he wants to put you in servitude. He wants you to be in slavery. So you have to learn how to be content with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh and to have faith in the Lord. Because when you're content, that shows that you have faith. Proverbs 30 and 7. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is Yahweh? lest I be poor and steal and take that name in vain. So you're going to have those who enter into, enter into poverty, you know, because in the, in, the, in the split moment, people around the world is going to enter into poverty. And that's when these, these economic systems collapse. And when there's all hell breaking on, on every side, when you have uh, uh, the, the elite's agenda going on, but really it's Yahweh Bashim Shai's agenda. They're just carrying it out. They're thinking that they're doing their own will, but they're doing the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You're going to have many that turn from the faith, all right, that are not grounded. Because remember, only the elect, only the just shall live by faith. And that's the elect. 
But you're going to have many that call themselves being believers become offended. All right. And, and, and look at the thing that Esau offers as a solution, as a deliverance, as a way out, as a, as a source, you know, that will, that will be their provider. Instead of looking towards you, how about some Yahweh shy? And that's the reason why the scripture says this, Matthew 16 and 26. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Which um, the word profited goes into ophelia, which means youthfulness. You know, so what is, it, is, is use, the usefulness for men? If he shall gain the whole world, yeah, you 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 take the MOTB, you know, you you're able to, you know, get a get a get a house. You're able to, you know, um, get a ride share because you they're saying that in the in the new world order, you will owe nothing and be happy. So you're not gonna own a car, you're not gonna own a house, but you will have somewhere to to lay your head. You have somebody pick you up when you want to. Your every move is monitored. All right, everything you do from what you eat to what you put on to who you hanging out with, you have a social credit score. But then you have some that will take the MOTB and they still won't be able to eat. They're still going to die of famine. So, so what does it profit you, you know, to gain the whole world but lose your, your soul? What will you give in exchange for your soul? The word for exchange is antilagma, and it means to give an exchange for another or to give one thing in exchange for another. So you're going to hand your soul over to this man to be in servitude under him. For, for, for what? And ultimately, the true reason is, is because you're covetous. See, your, your uh, God is your belly. You know, it says in the, in the book of 1 Corinthians 6, in 13, and this is coming from the Bible in basic English, food is for the stomach and the stomach is for food. And Yahweh will put an end to, to them together. But the body is not for the desires of flesh. Uh, for Yahweh and Yahweh for the body, see? So so really your, your body belongs into Yahweh Shai who purchased it. But you, through your covetousness, you know, you are willing to put yourself into servitude unto another man that is just a man because you desire to eat. It says in the book of Sirach, the 10th chapter, verse 9, Why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man, for such a one set of his own soul to sell, because while he liveth, he casteth away his bowels. So yeah, when, when you're alive, and you need food to live. You know, food for the stomach and the stomach for food. You know, so you eat so that you can get the, the, the nourishment. You know, the food goes into your belly. As it states in, in Matthew 15 and, and 17. Do ye not, do not ye, un, ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth into the mouth, uh, goeth into the belly and is cast into the drought. Because it goes into your stomach. Your stomach uh, processes it, breaks it down. It goes into your intestines. The intestine sucks out the nutrients and it, and it uh, uh, expels the waste from the body. And then you become hungry again. But you have some people that only live to feed that appetite. They're not living to praise Yahweh Bashmi Shai and serve Yahweh Bashmi Shai. Did not Yahweh Shai give us an example when he was tempted by Satan and he said this? This is Matthew 4 and 3. And when the tempter came to him and he said, If thou be the son of man, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yahweh. But you have some that have a different mind state. They believe that they live for bread alone. And that's the reason why the Lord warned us. And he said, Be not as the Gentiles, you know. Or the, or the nations nations of the world. Let me see if I can find that real fast. The book of Luke, the 12th chapter, verse 30. And I'll start up. 
This is verse 28. It says, if then Yahweh clothed the grass, which is uh, today in the field and tomorrow cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye doubtful of a doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of Yahweh, and all things shall be added unto you. See? So you're supposed to be seeking the kingdom of Yahweh. That's the reason that your conversation should be in heaven. Now, when it comes down to, you know, those that are covetous, it says this in Philippians 3 and 19. It says, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly. See? And whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven from whence we also look. All right, for the Savior, the Lord, Yahweh Shemashiach. So you have certain individuals whose God is their belly. So guess what? They serve their belly. They serve their appetites. They serve that covetous desire. All right, but we cannot be that way. Our conversation has to be in heaven from whence we look for our Savior, who is Yahweh Shai. The book of Sirach 14 and 9, a covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion. And the iniquity of the wicked drive up the soul. So the same way that death and hell is never full. You know, the same way that the grave is never full. That's the same way that a covetous man is. That's the same way that an adulterer is. They're never full. That appetite can never be satisfied. And that's the reason why you have to learn how to be content in Yahweh Shai. Now, another definition for covetousness, it says marked by inordinate desires for wealth or possessions or for another's possessions. And when you go into the word inordinate, it means exceeding reasonable limits. So like, damn, you know, you, you, you can never be satisfied. And that's the spirit that Achan was in. When you go into the book of Joshua, the seventh chapter, verse 16, and beginning at uh, verse 16, so Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes and the tribe of Judah was taken and he brought the family of Judah and he took the family of uh, Zarhite and he brought the family of the Zarhites man by man and Zabdi was taken and he brought the household he brought his household man by man and Achan the son of Camry the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory unto Yahweh power of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed I have sinned against Yahweh power of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment, and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. Then I coveted them and took them and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of the tent and the silver under it. So what this individual did was he took something that they were warned not to take. Now the word Achan, you know, um, means troubler when you look it up, all right? So you don't want to be aching into your household, all right? You don't want to leave your family aching. <laughs> That's a, you know, double entendre. But anyways, um, you don't want to be a troubler into your household. Now going to um, verse 22, it says, Joshua sent messengers and they ran un uh, unto the tent and behold, it was hid in the tent, the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and laid them before Yahweh. And Joshua and all of Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garments and the wedge of gold and his son and his, and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tents and all that he had and they brought them unto the valley of Accor, all right? Which the word 
uh, a core, if I'm not mistaken, it goes back to Aikar, and that's a root, you know, of the of the name Achan. All right. And Joshua said, "Why hast thou troubled us? Yahweh shall trouble thee this day, and all Israel stone him with stones, and burn them with fire. And after they had stoned them with stones." Now going to First Chronicles two and seven, the sons of Camri, Akar, which is which is Akar, or Akar, Akar, Salakia, the troubler of Israel who transgressed in the things accursed. So the word uh, Akar goes into the word troubler. The word Akin goes into the word troubler. All right. So you don't want to be someone that troubles yourself or trouble your household because you covet after things that are cursed and what's a curse the motb is an accursed thing first chronicles uh, i'm sorry uh, proverbs 15 to 27 he that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house but he that hateth gifts shall live and esau is going to package this thing up to make it seem as if it's a gift he's going to promise you ubi universal basic income if you're sick, he's going to promise you health. All right. He's going to promise you the, the, the world. All right. After he took away your, your, your liberties, your rights, your privileges. All right. After he made life hard for you, he's going to promise you that life back as a gift. If you bow down and you worship him, if you take his MOTB, if you receive the CHIP and the brain CHIP. But the scriptures say, Proverbs 23 and 5, Without set thine eyes upon that which is not, for riches certainly make themselves wings and fly away as an eagle towards heaven. All right? <laughs> In the blink of a moment, if this fiat currency is flying away, how much more something that's zeros and ones on the computer? All right? That's, that's digital money. And with that digital money, the RFID chip, you can't ransom, you know, uh, um, give a ransom unto your how. You couldn't even give a ransom unto your house with gold and silver. All right, the ransom that was given unto Yahweh for our redemption is his son, Yahweh Shai. So therefore, you should be setting your, your conversation to heaven, repenting and believing upon Yahweh Shai, and setting your conversation to heaven and being content with what Yahweh Bashmi Shai has blessed you with until the time comes when you inherit incorruption. All right, because that's way better than anything that Esau can offer. See, Esau, through his technology, he offers you immortality. He says that he can cause you to transcend. You know, but but uploading somebody's conscience into a floppy disk, you know, or a CD, you know, or a computer, that does not give you an everlasting life. That's a false sense of everlasting life. All right. Because that's not really you. That's just a memory. The book of Psalms 49 and 6, it says, They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, none of them all right, can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to Yahweh a ransom for him. For the redemption of their soul is precious, and it ceaseth forever, that he should live forever and not see corruption. So who is the one that... that was the redemption for our souls. It was Yahweh Shai. And it's through Yahweh Shai that we're going to live forever. The book of Luke 20 and 36, neither can they die anymore, for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of Yahweh being the children of the resurrection. And we want to be the children of the first resurrection, which is the first dominion, all right, which we will inherit the kingdom of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai if we're part of the elect and if we endure. But that's what it takes. Endurance, constancy, patience, suffering. Revelation 14 and 12 says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Yahweh and the faith in Yahweh Shai. And the word there for patience is hupomene. And it means to remain loyal, loyal to faith and piety in even the greatest times of suffering. Not to swerve from your purpose. And our purpose is to serve Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And endure to the end, to the time when that transition comes and we inherit incorruption and we inherit the kingdom. And that's something greater than what Esau can offer you. So if you're going to covet anything, covet the kingdom of heaven. 
All right, which means that you will have to repent and live a righteous life to the best of your ability because our righteousness come through Yahweh Shai. So you have to walk according to the conversation in heaven and you have to be content and wait patiently for Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shai. So with that, I truly hope that this lesson was edifying our praises and honor and glory being to Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shai. Double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace and love, salutations and mercy be unto the hopeful elect. Shalom. Abad Babal, Kwambakiyam, Shalom.